She can listen when yeah. she's not in the room with us. We should definitely practice recording ourselves. How are we going to record this song? Are we going to do it track by track? Okay. Are we laying down the drums first? Okay. There's parts where maybe there's stomps and things. Like, how mm -hmm. does that get? How do the how do the cues happen for that? It's because we deal with tempo so much. Mm -hmm. We're all just going to have to lay down together. Um, also, that's going to make the first segment of recording and go a lot more quickly and expediently too. How do we deal with solos? Yeah. The, nobody's gonna sit there and listen to a record and be like, Steve can't play rhythm and lead at the same time. No. What the hell? You guys are posers, man. Definitely not. Yeah. You just for get, the of it. Yeah, do a click to that and then kill the click mm -hmm. for the for the gooses. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of which, it would be good to actually write down tempos. Yeah. For all the songs. Okay, Olive Reader was what, 155, I think, on that? Usually not to get in is our fastest unless like I fuck up a tempo set. In which case it's faster yes. than that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? yeah. Where's the niche part where it feels good, you know? You guys will follow my tempo no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of bands. Because you're the loudest instrument. How are you with my guitar? Uh, <laughs> now have we, have we ruled out a sort of Dogma 95 uh, album where we have a single mic in the center of the room and <laughs> we do everything in one take and... There's no mixing except who's closer to the mic and who's farther yes. from the mic. I think we're ruling that out. Yeah, I think, really I think we're ruled out. <laughs> All these things that we've never thought of will come, come out. Light. Oh wait, there's a cue here, but how are we going to cue that? Well, how are we going to be sitting in the studio? Are we going to see, see each other? other? Put mirrors right. on the ceiling. Right. Well, being yeah. able to play a song without any vocals at all, we should practice that. Or wait, wait, wait. Why can't? Why can't that? Why can't the drum part be recorded along with the click track, with maybe Miley singing to you from the booth? Well, we can. But I, I think, think that's your point: is that like we need to figure out what the process, the, yeah. what the process is to get used to any weird pitfalls of how we're going to do it. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to record violin and vocal at the same time, so that I can give each one a little bit more attention. Um, well, <laughs> that's honestly that makes my job so much easier. But that saying, um, I realized a thing about like. That not only like when we're playing live we respond to each other i also respond to myself and there's like a certain kind of intensity that you get when you're like fucking balls out on an instrument and fucking balls out vocally that like mostly i've the songs that we've had a long time i've gotten really used to mm -hmm. and so it's gonna feel like i'm not like it's gonna feel like i'm giving 75 percent when i'm giving 100 only on one thing it's gonna be weird a little mm -hmm. bit so i'm mm -hmm. i'm a little bit worried in my own part that i need to get used to that or otherwise i'll feel like it's not Intense enough, if that makes any sense. We do violin and vocal the way you're used to doing, in the way you're used to driving the band, and have you be totally in a booth. But and then those you'll be able and to see me. Is that is that true? Uh, because okay. a lot of booths will have windows into the room. Because obviously you get more kind of more band energy if you can just record the whole song live and everyone plays yeah. flawlessly. And I think that's awesome if we can if we can do it. 
creating a thing and like responding to each other and that's yeah. the whole thing you're trying to capture in the studio i think yeah i think that would you know kind of create a oh, this is big. it sounds like all of us are pro having amy denio come to a rehearsal yes yeah that's fine sure. I have to be honest, when Scott mentioned that, I kind of stammered a little bit because, like, I mean, it's fucking Amy Denio, you guys. It's frightening. It's completely <laughs> it's vulnerable. 100% frightening. We'll wait on solidifying our final process. Like, this is a rough draft. We should talk to Floyd first before we finalize our rough draft. Cues. <laughs> Cues. Oh, and also isolation. Well, isolation. Like, what options of isolating instruments okay. do you have? Um, you are off of school soon. Which means that you don't have day things, right? Um, but you have a day jobby job. Do you think like swinging a couple of hours to walk the studio is an option, or is that not something we should consider? If it's near the end of the work day. Except that that is in the middle of the year when you're teaching, correct? It's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday I teach. Oh. So the. So maybe we could swing a Friday at four. And then Jerry leaves on the 23rd. You're, you, you leave on that Friday on the 27th, yes? Friday the I actually 27th. leave Thursday the 26th. Damn it! So you guys are like ships in the night this summer. There's no way I could do a Friday. Okay. Um, what about Monday? Or oh, maybe Tuesday. 23rd, 24th, or 16th, 17th? So really what I'm saying is Wednesday. <laughs> Scott teaches from the 1 to 7 on Wednesdays? Okay. Don't worry about me, you guys. I mean, the studio, you, there's enough people to think about everything. Just go for it. Okay. I move we stop worrying about Kai. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can use both of the feedback from Amy and Floyd to finalize our prep plan. Yeah. It's going to be so hard to get us all in the same room. Let's mm -hmm. get that recording earlier than... Because one of us can tour the studio, take photos, and share it with everyone. Mm -hmm. It sounds like all of us are slightly more flexible than you. Surprise. All right. <laughs> I'm told, I'm in. I'm told I'm in. I haven't really counted that high, but did you did in. you look at the the splash page with the fake band names on them? <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't go back to that. Oh, oh my god, you need to. One of them. I didn't like, realize those were fake names. I there's were there's four fake names. One of them is like nuclear sparkle sword, and like <laughs> that's good. Is that actually possible before say August? I yeah. I think it may be. It's like in July, um, things get. A little bit more regular for me, so I, and that's right as I leave town. That's the thing. I think we're uh, we're not. There's all one week. Gonna be here. Okay, so no, I have when everyone's schedule. Out. Is there availability before Monday, July seventh, or should we look at that week? And Friday we have a show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys. It's only a couple days. Right, and Whitney and I leave town on Saturday. Yep. So, I just, so we have, I have a show out of town on Saturday. And the problem is that we have an important, high paying gig on the the upcoming Saturday. Oh. So it be our only rehearsal for that. Fuck. But basically that means our options are between, I don't know, 4 and 7.30 on Friday the 11th, uh, or Monday, July 7th at some time. And how long are you gone? Three weeks. Three weeks. He's gone until August 1st. Why, Jerry? <laughs> he does this every year. I'm going on the lamb. Oh. He doesn't want the... The IRS. Oh, <laughs> the G men are closing in on me. See, just as Kai says you can't, Jerry says you can. The ships in the night. night. Ships in the night. And I'm like, like the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> what a great, great gift that's going to be forever. Wednesday daytime is a possibility for me, but Scott has to teach at one. Friday Still afternoon. Possibly. I could. I think Thursday's my last day in the building, so. Oh, cool. Let's go the summer. Uh, Monday the 23rd and Friday the 27th in the afternoon possibilities for the three of you? Well, three of us, rather, for you guys. Huh? Make that, so I will be in town the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th through the 24th. Okay, so you leave on the 24th? Yes. Okay. The hardest thing is when, like, uh, you'll be gone for three weeks, and you'll be gone for like three weeks, like overlapping times. I mean, if we, if we get an hour and a half in, might as well. Or if we get an hour, might as well. Are there cheat okay. codes with the uh, sousaphone? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, if that's all we got, that's all we got. I mean, what people think I do, what my mom thinks right. I do. Right. What I actually, what I actually, what I actually do. Fucking scheduling, you guys. Scheduling, scheduling, right. scheduling. scheduling. Right. It's yeah. been way right. more time scheduling than we deserve. Right, it's, it's the, the hardest thing. thing. Right. So if we're actually going to turn to make Friday the 11th work, um, you're off of work 
straight by. What is a realistic time that you could be at? Uh, hour and a half, six to seven thirty. Um, maybe maybe like till eight, and then eight thirty I'll show up. I think that's. Uh, the you could just give them a heads up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna block off six to eight for a rehearsal on the calendar, and I'm gonna call it Plan A. <laughs> <laughs> that day will be Plan B. Uh huh. I don't know. Six o'clock is Plan B on Monday. So then we have it. Uh, by then we should have um, like some feedback from Amy, hopefully, and we'll have tour the stu studio with Floyd. In between now and then, in our like regular rehearsal schedule, roughly, we can start making like plans on how to piece apart like our song. Oh. Who cues us? Like, where are, are the retards and, yeah. and all that stuff? You know. Nobody wanted us to close their song. I know. That's, yes. And it was We're like, off the hook. That was like the best idea. Too. I know. I was so excited about that. I was like, people are gonna RT this, and bands are gonna pony up like twenty bucks a piece. I was starting to think to myself, like, if it comes down to the wire. Like, I would even sign up for that. Right. Like, oh yeah, let's do, you know, and I get to pick it. Right, uh, yeah, like, totally. Is that we don't have to spend a bunch of workshopping time, like, that's in time that's like, how would we do that right now? Exactly. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. uh, we also don't have to spend time doing brunch. Nobody wanted to have brunch with us. I guess they don't like our... Well, we'll have it without them. Like, jokes. Uh -huh. exactly. They just can't handle our humor. Which means, like, most of it is going to be, like, reproduction stuff, so it's mostly, like, money and hiring people to do things. I'm really, I can't even tell you how excited I am. Probably you and I collaborating on making the fake book happen. Like, so yeah. How many, how many people want a fake book? Uh, a significant number. I'll have to go over the nice. whole, like, that's really some number crunching between now and then anyways. Um, There's also money that's already been spent that ought to be figured in the... Of all the booze. The <laughs> so much booze. Right. Steve, you're such a hard drinker. It's, it's hard to keep up. bottles of scotch that we drank while we filmed at the house. All right. That's, right, that's high, take after take, let's pour it. I know. <laughs> Jerry has to go again, I guess I'll pour another glass. <laughs> Seems like I've bungled uh, another one. Floozy <laughs> by day, drunker by day. <laughs> all right, I'll all of those, all of those reimbursements. Uh, so Ka Kaiba new drum heads for his whole kit. Mm -hmm. so let's <laughs> you know, that's a little bit more legitimate though. Like. <laughs> That's oh sure, that, oh, you style. decide what's legitimate for my drum set. <laughs> <laughs> what we needed on our budget, I don't know what that numbers are actually going to look like because yeah. like Kickstarter cut, but like maybe offset by offline donations and so like mm -hmm. that's going to balance out. Depending on what the numbers look like, like our backers party may be actually able to be out of um, out of that budget. And like the backers would probably get a kick out of like being in the same place that we shot part of our Kickstarter. Anyway, <laughs> let's wait to figure out dollars for the backup that that backers party until we've studio. gotten through the studio right. expenses. We don't know. For sure. I was about to spend it, yeah. Fine, like turning some of our band pictures into photos. Like I will want to pull Lillian's new logo into there and like make it a proper poster. So that sort of thing. You actually want to, to get the press involved? You want to actually give them a track in advance, you know, where they know that they have the advance listen to it, mm -hmm. and then they feel like when they when they're reviewing it that they, you know, there's a benefit to them giving a review because they yeah. no one else has heard it. Like they've got the scoop power. Yeah, and so giving nice. them an opportunity like that, then they're more likely to actually review it. Now, but yeah, for the record, you have completely blown away any like. Me dragging my feet and I'm sorry, mixed metaphors, but um, you know, like I always say, like, well, realistically, X, Y, Z, and then you prove that actually you can do it way better and get more money and do it quicker, and you know what I mean, like. So realistically, five thousand on Kickstarter is about all you can hope for. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or well, a lot, lot of yeah. people are like, how the fuck do you said, do that? Right? So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, so. I just read every blog on how to and I followed the instructions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everybody I've run into who's a musician in a band has said, Congratulations on your Kickstarter and how did you break ten grand? <laughs> everybody is really astounded every that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. And I, I, still still want to talk to I go, my lee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We got my lee. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just giving you conservative and scholars sure. too. Like yeah, from, and from I'm not meaning industry. to discourage, but I just no, and I, 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 if it goes faster, all the better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, and that's as long as it's done satisfactorily. Yeah, no, helps. absolutely. There's there are some firsts of like being managing the whole process that like I mean I need to take conservative estimates into account even if I intend on like pushing the envelope in some ways. You know, mm -hmm. I need to know what people expect and what the standards are. And I I agree with all of that. I mean I've like 
I, I, there's a few things that are a first time here for me, like on like pre-release type of politics media stuff. Like that is stuff I have zero experience in. Mm. So like the more that you guys like talk about your experiences there and what you think is good, like it's kind of like posting the knocked and gone egg guitar solo just before the show. Yeah, no, and I, that makes sense as a concept, and that like got people pretty fired up, and it was awesome. Um, and the promotion, and then so then based on that, we predicted when we could have a CD release party, mm -hmm. and the CDs actually ultimately ended up getting delivered like the day before. Oh shit! I I played a CD CD release where he didn't even have product. God. And that is the, like that happens. And that is the worst thing yep. ever to it's, have yeah. a CD release party and not have a CD. Yeah. But just to, to put it in stark terms, sure. so they could send you um, they could send you the golden CD, right? They just give you that in, in advance, and you look at it, and you suddenly realize, oh wait, there was some layer in Photoshop that was supposed to be hidden, and somehow that showed up on the CD. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. The oh, there's a typo. You know. Yeah. yeah. Or just like up. Oh, yeah. Sure. And then the presses. Do it all the over again. Do it again. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry has his hand up. Well, I just Gerard? want to point out that we're at 219 now. Thank you, 219, because booking anything in fucking Seattle. If we want to have like a nice release, we'll have to book it at least a couple of months out. If our stuff is done, it is possible this might be a CD release date. <laughs> mm. Right on. And we keep like booking bigger <laughs> bigger venues saying this might be our CD release. And then like, we're like, nope, actually, uh, our stuff's not going to be done yet until it actually is. And we can keep talking more about like what we should do press-wise to keep building this up as we're like further along in planning as well. Thank you guys awesome. for making time in your very crazy busy schedule.